baby man, baby guy, baby chicken that flies. I'm a dude who's a dragon, and my dad is that wagon. The Elder Scrolls Vi... Sky Style. If you've played a video game, held a video game, smelled a video game shit, maybe you are the video game. Chances are you're familiar with Dragonheart, but just in case you've never heard of a Dennis Quaid, Skyrim is an open world RPG where no one really focuses on the main quest because exploring and making shit is way more fun. That's right baby dragon man, in this game you can explore at your leisure and focus on whatever skills you want. There's a stupid amount of dungeons and caves to explore and the random shit you find actually has the potential to be useful. In Skyrim, you can use alchemy to craft your own potions and poisons. It's really cool because the game actually makes you learn an ingredient's effects before you can start Professor Snaping that shit. You can either just start combining shit until something works, or you can take that stuff yourself and pray to god your Quaid doesn't get dentist. But it's really cool because along with making different kinds of potions to use, you can make poisons to apply to your weapons, or to put in someone's pocket so that they drink it and die. Maybe. Probably not. You kids like DS games? Grab that Auto Chinese Fighters! It's not only one of the best games on the Nintendo DS, but it's also, in my humble Nike opinion, one of the best Grand Theft Auto games of all time! Now I know that's a bold statement considering this is a spin-off made for the sequel to the fucking Game Boy, but don't be fooled, little hot boy. This game not only has all the staples of a GTA game and more, but in true Rockstar fashion, nearly the entire Liberty City from GTA 4 was crammed into this tiny DS cartridge. Grand Theft Auto on DS may sound like a dog shit idea at first, but this game comes together beautifully. Not only does Chinatown Wars make great use of the second touchscreen for the map and game info, but it actually uses it to make some really cool additions to the series too. Stuff like actually having to hotwire a car, hack into the Giga Drive mainframe before- That was really dumb. This shit might sound a little gimmicky, but when you're trying to run away from the cops and you have to jam a screwdriver into a Honda Civic as fast as you can, that shit can get real hot, bothered, and intense real quick. Now there's a lot of hot boy reasons for why I love this game so much, but the best part about China fighters is easily the drug dealing. In Chinatown Wars, you can buy and sell drugs with dealers all over the city. You find dealers by exploring the city, and as you find more and more skinny peas, you'll receive emails tip-offs telling you who's selling low and which dungo bungo boys are buying high. Running around the city buying and selling drugs is so much dang fun and it adds so much to the GTA formula. Not only do the dealers actually provide an incentive to explore the massive city, but safe houses actually serve a purpose in a GTA game for once, you know other than for saving your game. Every drug deal has the potential to be a bust, and chances are you're gonna have a lot of drugs on you. Having safe houses all over the city means you have lots of places to stash your shit when it hits the fan, which I think is a really awesome incentive to buy a bunch of real estate. It's free real estate. The drug dealing economy and turf map is the coolest idea for GTA since fucking motorcycles, so why the fuck was it not in GTA 5? I mean, Trevor makes meth, god damn. So drug dealing is awesome. Please don't quote me on that. But you know what would be even more dank Jenkins than selling drugs? Making drugs with dragons. The Elder Chinese Autos, Meth Dragons. So if we bang these two games, the result might come out looking a little confusing and gross at first. But by carefully selecting just a few ideas and mechanics from Skyrim and adding them to what's already in Chinatown Wars, I think that this shit could be hot, hot, how oh god it's happening, hot ball! So in Skyrim you find stuff by exploring dungeons and caves and shit, so how does that translate to an urban environment? I'm talking crack houses apartment buildings, gas stations, supermarkets. Because this is the son of Skyrim, you could choose to be as noble as you'd like in your drug-making adventures. Whether that means buying supplies from a supermarket or robbing it, trading with other dealers or robbing them at gunpoint, making your own drugs or just ripping off other drug deals Omar from The Wire style. I robs drug dealers. Making drugs could be as simple as Skyrim alchemy, mainly because a super detailed process teaching you how to make drugs in a video game might be 
illegal. But if you had to just experiment with combinations or risk popping shit yourself to learn its properties, making drugs could be a super satisfying process. And maybe if your empire gets big enough, you could set up bigger operations after conquering different turfs around the map. In Skyrim, one of the main side quests is the big civil war between these two jabronis, and the game kind of leaves it up to you to decide the outcome. Which is really cool. If there were conflicts like that going on between different gangs and Chinatown scrolls, helping aside, saying fuck you to everyone, or not getting involved at all can make for some really interesting choices. Oh yeah, and you know how you can craft poisons in Skyrim and poison people? What if we elevated that idea to say, maybe poisoning an entire batch of cocaine on purpose to take out a rival gang? Or maybe switching out the drugs for a rival deal to cause some conflict? Applying Skyrim's open-ended approach to character building and gameplay to something completely different like a game about drug dealing can make for some really cool ass moments. My biggest beef with the GTA games and their gameplay is that there's always been a pre-established character with already defined traits, skills, and dialogue. But if a game with as much potential as Chinatown Wars let you play however the fuck you wanted and allowed you to craft either a smooth talker, violent madman, or brilliant chemist from the ground up, that shit would be so cool. Thank you so much for watching and let me know what you hot boys and gamer girls are thinking in the comments. Also, special shout out to wait, what the fuck am I doing? I need a beat for this shit. Shout out to the big double D, Derek Dean, for his pledge. Ah. Also, baby chicken, Miles Dobson is so lit. Woo! Sliz Lord Nondor is the fucking best. I ain't even done yet. I got two more left. Goddamn, I'm talking about that hot Prizzler Lord Graham Ashby. Matthew Carla is the hot boy that's astounding. Thank you all so much for your incredible support. Hot boy nation is the greatest house in Hogwarts. Black. Follow me on Twitter if you like that shit Follow me on Snapchat too if you wanna see pics of my hot boy tits Gross, that was aggressive, I'm sorry but you got the message If you wanna contact me, email me at something something gmail.com Backslash AOL, backslash Hotmail, backslash MSN, backslash Yahoo, backslash Gmail Again, that's two Gmails in the pan, it's the hot boy hen house I'm about to let my motherfucking baby chickens out and they be clucking